Hi, I'm Brandon with the Woodbury University IT department, and this is the first in a series of videos where we'll talk about using Microsoft Teams uh, for your video conferencing needs and course delivery this fall. So in the meantime, I'd like you to download the app. You can do so from office.com. So go ahead and log in, if you will, and you're gonna use your single sign-in password as usual. And uh, you will give some options here for mobile and desktop. Uh, please choose either one. We will not be using Guest as much as we did with Ring Central Meetings. Download that, you'll open it up, you'll log in. All the contacts from the entire organization will automatically be in there. If you go into Teams itself, you will be automatically connected to any teams that you've been added as part of. Uh, at this time, you will not be creating teams. That's not what we're discussing today. Uh, right now, we're just going to cover the four main elements of conducting a class. So the first place we'll go to is the calendar, which is quite prominent in Microsoft Teams. It's the only place that you can just launch a meeting from. So, I mean, you can do it in chat, but you're only going to be talking to the person or group that you're launching the, the meeting with. If you just want to start a meeting, generate a URL, and then have, send it out through email and have other people join, you're going to do it through the calendar option. So we'll go ahead and join. And just real quick, we're gonna go over device settings. This is the same as every other video conferencing application you've used to this point in your life. If you have more than one camera, you can select that. If you have more than speaker options, if you're wearing a headset, this is where you're gonna change it. If you have more than one microphone, for example, you'll switch over. So you can leave it on low or no for noise ambience. Real quick, I wanna cover the participant list. So as people join your meeting, you will be able to see them here. Some will be listed as attendees or guests. You can also select by their name and make them a presenter. This is similar in Ring Central Meeting to making a host. You also have breakout rooms available. This function is the exact same as it was in Ring Central Meetings, where you can open it up, you can choose how many rooms you want to have, how many people you're sending to those rooms, and whether you want to randomize it or add them manually to groups. Okay, so now we're going to schedule a meeting. As you can see, the controls are intuitive. They look exactly like every other application you've used to do this. The difference with Microsoft Teams is its integration directly into Outlook. When you open up the link in your calendar, it will not give you a URL to share until you invite someone. And then you can freely share it for more people. And setting up recurring meetings, choose that option. You can choose the days of the week for the hours, etc and that will also immediately communicate to your Outlook and populate your calendar. The main takeaway is you cannot generate a URL until you've uh, added at least one person. So let's take another look at the actual meeting itself. Once you have your participants joined, they will be able to talk to each other and you, they'll be able to share links within the chat. There'll be a chat transcript available, uh, but here you can also share files. So let's look at the screen share. Again, very intuitive, just like Ring Central Meeting and Zoom. If you have more than one monitor, you can choose which monitor desktop you're sharing, uh, individual windows that you have open, make sure they're open completely on the desktop. And if you're playing media files, make sure you've selected audio so that the audio goes to everyone in the room. And finally, today we'll cover recording. This is handled a little differently in Microsoft Teams. Uh, Ring Central Meeting, as you're used to, if you recorded a video, it's going to write to a local place on your hard drive, most likely the Documents folder or a path that you set. Uh, Microsoft Teams will not write locally. It's going to write to the cloud and more specifically to your connected OneDrive account through this organization. So what you'll do is navigate in your browser to your OneDrive. Again, it's in Office. And you'll see a new folder in there. It'll be Microsoft Teams, uh, Recording, and as long as you've named the meeting correctly, it will give you the right time and date stamp, and then you can move it to another folder. I would recommend creating course folders here. So if you have Film 410, you can add your entire Moodle roster as the permissions to view in that folder, and then after every class is recorded, you can take that file, move it to the other one, and you're done. They'll have access to it. A few notes for your video recording. If you enabled live captioning during your meeting, that will not be embedded in the video file that you recorded as of June 2021. 
It's maybe something I'm assuming they will address in a future update, but right now you'll have live captioning enabled. It will not show up in the recorded file. Also, there won't be a sidecar SRT file or anything of that nature that also populates in the folder. If you want captioning after the fact, I have a few recommendations, uh, but we could upload it to either like MS Stream or there are other methods that we could do uh, to get the captioning done. Just email me. And hopefully Microsoft will address this before the fall. And that's a caveat in everything else in this video as well. Everything here is true as of the time of this video. And this could all change by the time we meet again in the live sessions in August. Also, if you're recording a scheduled meeting, let's say it's from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and you end it at 4, and you look in OneDrive for your recording, it's not gonna be available until the original five o'clock end time. So in conclusion, you can still generate URLs, you can embed those into Moodle, you can record and share your class files with everybody, and it's going to be integrated into OneDrive, SharePoint, and your Microsoft Outlook calendar, which you've already been accustomed to. So there'll be more questions, I assume. This was just a short video introduction. So in the meantime, download the app, uh, start running it, play around with it, try to cause problems. When you run into issues, send them to me or you can wait until the live sessions this fall. Thanks for your time.